that places. Some members of parliament rented chamber and hall, and some rented four bedroom accommodation. And that is according to their taste. You know? And some of the members were able to utilize the resources that were made available to them for the purposes of their activities, their duties, their functions, and that of their constituents. Mm -hmm. You will be surprised that some members use the money to go and do renovations of structures in their constituencies for their constituents, like school blocks, like clinics. Okay? And so we can do this. As at now, there is no member of parliament as member of parliament living in government premises. We could do the same for the executive and non-essential services. You can do that for security services. It's not advisable to do that for the medical and also for other areas. The judiciary, mm -hmm. uh, they have to go and be, uh, uh, you know, usually the way we cocoon them, they are not supposed to mix with society because you don't know who is appearing before you the next day. Mm -hmm. And so you have to take care of this, this uh, group of uh, personnel. Mm -hmm. But for politicians, uh, for some category of public servants, I think we can, we can do that. And we can save a lot of money for the state mm -hmm. and also lease out the lands that you have these structures on to the private sector and agree with them as to the planning the uh, structures that you want to be put up in those areas. And so it's, it's unfortunate that we're going uh, the doing business as usual. Sir, Senchi, was it a correct approach to the problems which have bedeviled us in the field of the economy? I think so. I think so. The minority was not there? Yes, but that was a bold attempt to build consensus. Uh, there have been so much disagreement as to the way forward. Uh, it's true that most of what was stated at Senchi was already known. Okay? But there were disagreements. Some agreed, some did not agree. I mean, the issue of dietary principles of state policy has been in our constitution since 1992. And that is what we are all to be guided by. So you need no telling. But where do we go? What are the priorities? What is the sequence? What should we do first? What should we do second? And so forth. You need to build consensus. And it is not a political football game for only the parties to be shifting blame here and there and playing ball. Civil society was involved, particularly the private sector and civil society institutions who usually are to act also as arbiters. Okay? And so once you are able to get the country to agree on a consensus, on a way forward, then you have done a lot of good. For example, the, the directors of the Bank of Ghana. I mean, these had to be looked at seriously and, you know, there was consensus as to what should be done. And the Bank of Ghana has come to review them. Okay? Initially, there was disagreement. And so that forum was very necessary. Uh, and this is not the first time we did a national economic forum. We've done them before. And it was the same before we did them. It was done in the uh, first NDC. It was done in the MPP time. And so it is this time. So I think that it was a bold attempt. And uh, we only pray that, as usual, we we'll, we'll, we'll implement what we decided on. That's one of the serious challenges in this country, implementation. So have you ever nurtured or is nurturing the ambition to lead this country one day as president? I am, I am a, a political being. Um, and uh, as far back as my secondary school days, when my headmaster, uh, who is now alive, is still alive, uh, Honorable M.A. Sedu, uh, asked mm -hmm. me what I wanted to be in future. I said I wanted to be president of Ghana. That's as young as secondary school from five. But when I became a lawyer, my focus was on practice. And that's why I decided to practice in Accra. But halfway through, 
some senior members of my area called me in 1992 when we were getting to the uh, democratic system and prevailed on me to contest. I thought it was too early to do so, but I had to take it because according to them I was being selfish. And so I contested. Uh, by his grace, I rose up from MP to minority leader to leader of the House and became member of parliament. And so if I have the opportunity to save the nation, why not? But His Excellency the President is fully aware that before his candidature, we had a lot of discussions. And I solidly pledged my support to him. And I gave him reasons why I thought he was a better candidate or preferred candidate than me. We went through details and I committed not just myself, all my resources with that of my family to making sure that he wins the election. And so when I hear people <laughs> talking about me going <laughs> to contest His Excellency the President, it's just out of ignorance. Because His Excellency the President is aware of what I did and why I did what I did. You know, he personally, I've met him a number of times, doesn't harbor that. I only knew that uh, my statement, public statement, unsettled him. And that was why he might have made that statement at the Institute of Local Government about those who want to see his back. You know, I know that, uh, I mean, he was, he was uh, shaken by my statement. But, you know, I criticize to improve. I don't criticize to destroy. And I don't think that the culture of hypocrisy is good for any society. I believe that we should stop gossiping, backbiting, and be bold enough to state our positions. There is nobody who is the repository of knowledge or energy or power or whatever. We need a collective effort of everybody. And that's why we need team work. We don't need to destroy each other. And so I don't harbor any intention of contesting His Excellency John Draman Mahama in 2016. I don't. Are you satisfied with his performance? You know, His Excellency, I've had a number of discussions with him. Uh, he, he's, he's overwhelmed with the challenges. I may disagree with him to the team that he has chosen. Not because the team are not intelligent, no. But you know, they don't have that store of experience and knowledge to be able to draw his attention to the pitfalls and potholes that are on the road. You need to have, we have a store in this country, rich, rich arsenal of, 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 of human resource to anchor him to succeed. Not necessarily NDC members. But why not? Even if they are NDC members. Because it's the NDC that carried the manifesto to the people and the people elected them. And it's the NDC that discussed the manifesto with His Excellency the President and agreed on the way forward. And so who can better implement it than these members of the NDC? Definitely there are areas that you need to go beyond your party to put in merit to be able to support. But as to the people surrounding his excellent the president, I think the NDC rich resources are better positions to advise him on many areas. That I disagree with him and I've made it known to him that, that I didn't miss my words. Uh, he takes the decisions and then we follow. Maybe because of this, my candidness, and the way I go about things, some young hands think that I'm enemy with them. Mm. But I can tell you, as far back as 1990s, during the time of his Excellency Jerry John Rollins, I disagree with him on a number of issues, and I spoke publicly 
even on the floor of parliament. And so when I was made minority leader, I mean, people were surprised. It's because you've not been observant that I took His Excellency John Ajekun Kufo to a serious asset test. And so if I was able to do that for eight years, and my party is now in power, I should now succumb to authority and then carry a different face and a different tongue. Unfortunately, I cannot. So thank you very much for coming. It's a pleasure, uh, Thank sir. you very much. It's, it's a been pleasure. a pleasure. Well, viewers, this is where we draw the curtains on hot issues for this week. We will be back with you again. And don't forget to keep your dial on TV3. I'm sure you know that we are giving you the best coverage for the World Cup. And we will continue to give you the best coverage for entertainment, for news, for everything. Stay tuned to TV3. And it's bye-bye from all of us from TV3. See you again very soon.